Hey Gators, it's so good to see you. Mr. Smith here. I am so excited to bring you some music to your home. Uh, we have a very awesome lesson coming to you. Today we are going to learn about instrument families. And uh, to start it off, we're going to start off like we usually do in my class and Miss Happiness class with a sight reading. Below you will see the sight reading. But before, I want to review some of the notes. I'm going to go through and review all the note names. So just in case you forgot or you may need a refresher, I'm going to help you out. So here's a refresher. Our first note that we're going to learn about is a whole note. And a whole note gets how many beats, class? Great, four beats. And this is what it looks like. It sounds like this when you perform it. Ta, ah, ah, ah. Our next note is a half note. How many beats does a half note get, class? Two, good. So we're gonna perform it as ta, ah. Here's what it looks like. Our next note is going to be a quarter note. And that gets how many beats? One, very good. And it, we perform it as ta. Our last note that we're going to talk about is our eighth note. And the eighth note looks like this. Can anyone tell me how many beats it gets? A half a beat. Very good. So when you are using this, it actually, two beats that look like this become one whole beat. And we perform it as TT. Can you repeat that after me or say it with me? TT. Now that you have reviewed all of the notes with us, I'm going to put down a rhythm and I want you to go to step one. Now in my class, in Miss Happiness class, step ones mean we are going to read the sight reading piece in our head. And now the sight reading piece will be below. Now we are going to move on to step two. Step two is find a partner. Find your mom, your dad, grandma, grandpa, your brother, your sister, and read it to them. Read the rhythm to them. Now we're going to move on to step three. Remember class, that step three, we are gonna read as an entire class. So let's all read it together with Mr. Smith. Here we go. One, two, ready, go. Ta, ti, ti, ta, 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 ah, ta, ah, ti, ti, ta, ti, ti, ta, ta, ah, 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 ta, ti, ti, ta, ta. Very good, awesome. Remember that double bar line means that the piece is over. Or if you add two dots to it, that means we'll repeat it. Let's do it one more time. Let's pretend that we have two dots next to the double bar line. Let's do it one more time. One, two, ready, go. Ta, ti, ti, ta, 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 ti, ti, ta, ti, ti, ta, 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 ti, ti, ta, ta. Very good. Now, I challenge you to take a household item of yours and play the rhythm with it while singing it or playing it. I got my household item, hope you do too. Here we go. One, two, ready, perform. Ta, ti, ti, ta, 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 ah, ta, ah, ti, ti, ta. Ti ti ta ta ah 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 ta ti ti ta ta. Good job. All right. The next thing that we're going to do is we are going to learn a song called "My Bonnie Lies Over the Ocean." Now this song is a traditional Scottish folk song. Now folk songs are very catchy and it's easy to uh, catch on to singing. So. I'm going to sing it one time through, and then you're going to sing it with me the second time. I'll put the words on the bottom so it'll help you. My bonnie lies over the ocean. My bonnie lies over the sea. My bonnie lies over the ocean. So bring back my bonnie to me. Bring back, bring back. Oh, bring back my bonnie to me, to me. Bring back, bring back, oh, bring back my Bonnie to me. Now, the next thing we're, we're going to do is we're going to have a little game with it. Now, I want you to take every B that you hear, and I want you to add a clap. So, watch me. My Bonnie lies over the ocean. My Bonnie lies over the sea. 
My Bonnie lies over the ocean. Oh, bring back my Bonnie to me. Bring back, bring back. Oh, bring back my Bonnie to me, to me. Bring back, bring back. Oh, bring back my Bonnie to me. Good job. So now that you have sang with me and we added the claps to it, you can create your own version of this. You don't have to clap. Maybe you can stomp on my Bonnie lies over the ocean. Or maybe you can change it up and you can stand or sit whenever you have a bee. Okay, so have fun with it. Enjoy it. It's your song. If you need to go back and uh, listen to it and sing along with me, just rewind the video and watch it. Um, well, I hope you enjoy and y'all are staying safe. Bye-bye. Hey, there, it's your funk to middle school. I hope you're all staying safe at home. Today, we're gonna to talk about the families of instruments. As you learned before in class, sound is made by producing vibrations. When we talk or sing, our vocal cords vibrate together to produce the sound. Instruments also make sound using vibrations, and we can categorize them into four different families by how those vibrations are produced. Those four families are woodwinds, brass, strings, and percussion. We're gonna start with the woodwind instruments. Woodwind instruments actually can be split up into two smaller categories, the reed instruments and the flutes. And we're gonna begin with the reed instruments. As the name suggests, woodwind instruments, most woodwind instruments have some kind of wood on them. Here you can see clarinet and the saxophone. Now, saxophone is commonly mistaken for a brass instrument because it's made of a brassy metal, but it's actually considered a woodwind instrument because you make sound with this wooden reed. When you stick this wooden reed on a mouthpiece, like this, and blow air through it, the mouthpiece can actually, along with the uh, reed, they vibrate together. Uh, that vibration travels all the way through the instrument and then out the bell. The bell actually amplifies it. It makes the sound louder. Now, you can make a sound with just the reed and the mouthpiece. It's not exactly gonna sound super pretty. When you put the mouthpiece back on the instrument, it sounds a little bit like this. a really unique reed instrument, I'm going to pass it off to my good friend and fellow musician, Miss Eland. Hi, my name is Miss Eland and this is a bassoon. It is a really big woodwind instrument. It is also a double reed, so it's a little bit different than a clarinet or saxophone. Those instruments have one piece of wood to make it vibrate and a double reed has two. And so the two pieces vibrate together to make the bassoon sound. It kind of sounds like this. Just by itself. Not as exciting as the full instrument, which can play notes that are really low. Oh, it scares the dog. And really high. exactly made of wood, but they used to be, and there are still some kinds of flutes that are made of wood. Now, flutes don't have a reed that vibrates. Instead, your air vibrates over a hole, 
like that. If you've ever blown into a glass bottle and made a sound, it's very, very similar. You blow a t across the hole right here, and the sound travels down this tube right here and out here. When you stick it onto the rest of the instrument, the body of the instrument, it sounds like this. Now let's move on to the brass instruments. Brass instruments are usually made out of metal, but what really sets them apart is how the vibrations are made. The vibrations are actually made with your lips vibrating together in what we call buzzing. It's almost like spitting really fast. And you can try it here. Put your hand in a little fist like this, have a little open hole. Put it up against your mouth, press it against your mouth, but not too hard and then buzz, vibrate your lips very fast together. That's how you buzz into a brass instrument. You do the exact same thing with a metal mouthpiece. Different instruments take different types of mouthpieces. This is trumpet mouthpiece. You press it lightly against your lips. And buzz. You can actually, by changing the shape of your mouth, you can actually come up with a lot of different pitches. It's a lot of fun to play. Now, when you put that mouthpiece onto the instrument, those vibrations that you make with your mouth pass through the mouthpiece and then through the instrument, all the way through all this tubing and out the bell, like this. Sounds a lot nicer, actually. And same thing, you can change the shape of your mouth and change the pitches. Or you can move your fingers to change the pitch. trombone is very similar. You have a mouthpiece, it's a lot bigger, and you buzz into that mouthpiece. Once you put that mouthpiece on the instrument, those vibrations travel all the way through here and then out the belt, just like a trumpet. But I want you to think for a second. Do you think a trombone is going to be higher or lower than a trumpet. If you guess lower, you are absolutely correct. Because the trombone is bigger and there's more space to vibrate. Let's take a listen. Now, as you can see, trombone doesn't have any buttons or valves like the trumpet did. So instead, to change the pitch, we have a slide like that. Now, generally speaking, the farther out the slide is, the longer the instrument is, the lower the pitch is. However, just like trumpet, you can also change the shape of your mouth to change the pitch. So we've learned about six different instruments. Four woodwind instruments, the clarinet, the saxophone, the bassoon, and the flute, and two brass instruments, the trumpet and the trombone. So with the help of a few of my friends, we're gonna to put together a little song for you using all of those instruments.
Bridges to talk about the string instruments and the percussion instruments. Ms. Bridges? The string family, also known as chordophones, are made up of instruments that have strings and a resonating body, and they have a different length of strings and thickness. This is a thick string, this is a thin string. The thickness, the length all determine the tone or the pitch of the instrument, and I'm going to show you how you can change the pitch on a violin. You change the length of the string by shortening the string, or I can even slide it up, and back to change the pitch of the instrument. The string family, and these mainly the orchestral strings, like the violin, the viola, cello, and the bass, can be used in a lot of different ways. We can use the bow to make it loud next to the bridge, so the closer it is to the bridge, the louder it will be, or soft. It could be closer toward the fingerboard or that end of the string. We can draw it far and fast, or very lightly and slow. These all create different tones for the instrument. This, the string family really began um, in the Middle East with the bowed string instruments around 6000 BC, and the instruments moved all the way through Europe, through all the travel routes and the trading routes, and eventually got toward Western Europe and in Italy mostly, where the instruments became very modern. This is the modern shape from the 1500s. This modern shape is so pretty perfect that it causes the instrument to make the perfect vibrations at exactly the right rate and volume that an excellent instrument can be heard for a very far distance. This bow is a modern shape of a bow. In the early days of the bows, they were shaped more like a bow and arrow bow, and it feels much softer. All right, and so these instruments may be used in the orchestra along with the brass, percussion, and woodwinds, and that would create the entire orchestra. Without the strings, it would be a band. So the band and the orchestra strings come together to make the whole orchestra. The string family. All right, this is an acoustic piano, and it's acoustic because it has no amplification, it's not digital, and everybody knows what it looks like. You know that it has a pedal, and I'm gonna show you how all this works. So when I open the instrument, I'm gonna see the tuning keys, just like on a string instrument, you have tuning keys, and I see the hammers for striking the strings. You notice they're very thick at the bottom. They go all the way from thick to very thin and short. So this is kind of like going all the way from a bass to a violin. And one quick thing, that this pedal is called a sustain pedal. So when I push this pedal down, it lifts these little dampers off the strings and allows them to ring. So when I play, the sound keeps going and going, keeps vibrating, and then I take it off and it's gone. That's an acoustic piano. This is a violin. It is the highest voice in the orchestra. It's a soprano voice, and it ranges from a G to a high E and can be quite high. It can play songs. Those songs that you might hear in school. It also can play very classical, very romantic songs. also play fiddle music. So it's a violin and a fiddle, even though they're, they're played differently, they are the same instrument. So I love playing the violin. All right, you may think this is a violin, but this is not a violin, it's a viola. It is the alto voice of the orchestra, and it has a lower range than a violin. resonant C string at the end. And you can play anything that you can play on a violin. Some consider it to be a very mellow instrument, so it has a beautiful... Beautiful sound. The alto voice is the viola. 
Here's the cello. It's the tenor voice of the orchestra, and it has a low range to a high range. Okay, you can play songs just like a violin. Everything that you can play on any instrument. It's super cool to play a cello. I'm Elise. This is a double bass or a string bass. It's the lowest voice of the violin family and was made a member of the orchestra around 1770. It's a hybrid between the cello and the 1400s viol. Uh, like a viol, it has sloped shoulders, so it's easier to get my arms around. This is only a one fourth size bass, so it's very small. A uh, full size bass would be something four times this big. Um, I'm going to be playing a French song written in 1858 and played fast, it's called the Can Can. And played slow, it's called Tortoise from Carnival of the Animals. This is a mandolin, and the mandolin is similar to a violin, and you can play the same tunes with the same fingers. It's also known for chords. Okay, so it's played with a pick and not a bow. Another cool fact about the mandolin is it has two strings that are the same double strings, and those make it sound especially loud. That's the mandolin. This is a ukulele. It is an instrument from Hawaii, and this is a concert uke. They come in all different sizes, really easy to play, the easiest instrument to learn to play and sing along, ukulele. Hello, this is an acoustic guitar. As you can see, it has six strings. These steel strings, you strum, sound gets picked up in the sound hole here on the guitar and, and projects. So you can use a pick as I'm using now, or you can play with your fingers. It's a very uh, portable instrument because you can take it anywhere and singer songwriters like it a lot and uh, they can throw it in a gig bag and carry it around wherever they need to go. And this is an acoustic guitar. <laughs> guitar as you can see it has six strings just like the acoustic guitar except this is a solid piece of wood it has a pickups here where the steel strings you resonate and the sound gets picked up by the these pickups and then it comes in the amplifier so you need an amplifier for an electric guitar once you do this then you have all types of sounds on amplifiers that you can add uh, effects and stuff to so you you have a broader range of sounds with an electric guitar. You can add effects. You can also add some distortion.
This is an electric guitar. <laughs> Hello, this is a baritone guitar. It's just like a six string uh, electric guitar, except as you can see, the scale's a little longer. Still has pickups that the strings pick up. It still needs an amplifier to uh, get sound out of it. And the difference uh, with the baritone guitar is actually the strings are a lot bigger on here and you actually tune this a perfect fourth down from a regular guitar, although you can, you can tune it lower or higher. The thing is on this particular baritone guitar, uh, tuning it to a fourth uh, down uh, makes it sound better and the strings are playable. So this is a baritone guitar. <laughs> The electric bass guitar, four strings, of course, pickups. You need an amplifier also to amplify it. Uh, the bass is considered in, in popular music to be like the foundation of, of music. Uh, if you're playing in bands and stuff, the bass guitars usually you know, lays back in the pocket with the drummer uh, to create the foundation of a song so other instruments can play over top of it. The electric bass guitar. Percussion, it is the oldest family of musical instruments next to the human voice. And in percussion, you can either shake something, you can strike it, you can scrape it, you can actually Touch one against the other to make different sounds. You know it's super simple to play percussion one thing at a time, and it can be very complicated too, like a drum set or an orchestra with a, with a band or an orchestra. The, we have to have little shakers. We can have tambourines. And we can have cool auxiliary percussion. This is a sizzle board, right? Bongos, pitch. all kinds of rattly things. So percussion is the backbone and the heartbeat of any musical group. Percussion. This is a cajon. It's a drum uh, that originated in South America and Peru. Um, it's a very portable drum. You can take it with you anywhere. They even make some of these that you can actually fold up in a little case and travel with them. Um, the bottom of the cajon is more like a bass drum and the top has snares across the top that give you kind of a snappy sound. So you can also play the cajon with some brushes that I have here. They make several different kinds of these cajon brushes. And um, this is the cajon. A lot of folks, though, traditionally play it with their hand. This is the cajon. drum kit, or some people call it a trap set. Uh, this is a four-piece kit. It can get bigger and smaller. Uh, we've got a 
bass drum or kick down here. We got a snare drum, a rack tom, floor tom, a crash cymbal, a ride cymbal, and a hi-hat. We got a little tambourine here, some bongos right there, but this is a four-piece drum kit.